it's a coffee day today, guys. Just got back from a, a particularly difficult leg day uh, where I am now reverse barbell squatting uh, more than my entire body weight. So it was a good day, but can't move. <laughs> but it's okay because I don't have to move to make this video for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about the five pens that I hope to add to my collection in 2023. Uh, I made this style video for the first time, I guess, e either last December or, or January. I don't remember when I posted it, um, but I did for 2022. And I took a look back at that list, the top five pens that I hoped to have added to my collection. And I added a total of zero of them into my collection. So <laughs> there is definitely some crossover because I still want those pens, which is how I know that they actually do belong in my collection. But uh, finances were tighter this year. Um, so pen purchases were significantly less this year. Uh, so didn't really add any. So don't imagine um, that finances are gonna be any better for the following year or 2023 but who knows a girl can dream and we can dream together we're dreaming so hard that i'm shaking the camera <laughs> uh so we're gonna start off with one that was there last year uh, and i really should get on this one asap because it's starting to become more and more difficult to find and that is the platinum 3776 uh, celluloid in the tortoise finish this pen is gorgeous, 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 and I have to have it. <laughs> I love the 3776, but I want to get it in either the fine or the medium nib. Ideally, I could get it from a place uh, that tunes nibs, um, and I'd be able to get a fine, and I'd be able to have a lot of that feedback that platinum is known for with the fine removed um, and then had it since they already have it just made like extra wet that would be my dream um, but if I could get it in a medium nib I would do that as well the mediums I don't need to have tuned or, or anything like that because their mediums are pretty good they're actually like their mediums and broads to be fair they're pretty close to like European broads and mediums uh, it's just like they're fine down that's like the extra fine basically <laughs> uh, that are uh, very very toothy which I don't necessarily like hate because I do already have um, a platinum century 3776 in a fine nib. This is the blue chartreuse. Uh, I've had this one since I think like 2015, 2016, something like that um, in a fine nib and I love it. Uh, but it is very, very toothy. So I have to be in the mood for that. Mm, pretty much every other pen I have does not have that uh, tooth factor to it. Um, so that's what I would want to do. Um, so that is probably the one that I'm going to focus on the most. Uh, that one and the one I'm going to say next uh, is probably the two that I'm going to focus on the most. But I really, really want that pen. Like, I really want that pen. I've used the platinum celluloids before. Um, a, a buddy of mine in Toronto sent me a couple of his. So you've seen some reviews by me, um, but never in that finish. And that's the one that I really desire. Uh, the second one is the only exclusive um, fountain pen that I want. And the reason why I'm probably going to get it is just because it's the least expensive of the entire five that I have. Uh, the reason why it's not number one sought after is because I already have a bunch. Uh, and that is a Bennu pen uh, in the Euphoria model, which specifically the Euphoria, I already have two. I have the Bourbon, which was the very first Bennu I ever had that made me fall down the rabbit hole. And oh my gosh, this is like one of the best pens I own. Uh, and then I have the Pomegranate, uh, which was a special slash limited edition um, or a limited edition. Yeah, it wasn't a special. Anyway, um, and I really adore that color as well. 
The next one is very different from these two uh, in the look. It is Euphoria model, but it is Goulet Pen's uh, Cookies and Cream finish. I don't know why this one just sings to my soul and every time I'm looking at it like two or three times a week on their website I just am because it's gorgeous and I want it so much and the only reason why I haven't pulled the trigger is because there have been a lot of expenses lately plus I do already have two euphorias and three talismans um, but I very 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 much want the cookies and cream model it is just stunning uh the material legitimately looks like cookies and cream and in january i'm gonna be going into a cut phase at the gym uh focusing less on hypertrophy and eating in a caloric surplus uh, and moving into more of um, an endurance phase eating in a very slight but eating in a slight caloric deficit so I want my pens to remind me of cookies and cream so that I don't have to eat cookies and cream you know it's practical right it, it's a financial investment not at all um, so hopefully I pick up one of those two or ideally both of those in 2023 if any of these five are gonna happen it will be one and or both of those pens because the other three that i would love to pick up in 2023 are very expensive but they're pens that are on my bucket list that i really really want to get my hands on so another one is the pilot custom arushi fountain pen and i want to get this one for two reasons well three actually the first one i adore pilot I have many of their pens. I am obsessed with some of their pens. Three of their models are in my all-time favorites, which is the uh, Custom 823, the Vacuum Filler, the 912, the Custom Heritage 912 uh, with the Falcon nib that I have, uh, and the Pilot Custom 74. Those three pens are dynamite. I also love the E95S. Um, that one is dynamite. So I adore, oh, and I love like, the Metropolitan. I've had even the Stargazer. I don't have that one anymore, but I love Pilot. Their pens are magnifique. Um, and the Custom Arushi is like the best that they have. Yes, they have the 845, which is like pretty close to the Arushi, but it doesn't have the number 30 size nib. And mama wants, <laughs> okay, mama wants so mama can dream. Uh, it's like my precious. Uh, I really wanna get my hands on that to try that out. Um, I don't even care about the nib size on that one. I would prefer a medium with pilots because uh, they're fine, sometimes can be a little too fine. Uh, and their fine is typically drier on the upstroke than on the downstroke. Um, but <sighs> mama wants that big honking nib. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then um, another pen that was in my top five last year that I kind of wanted to get my hands on is any Machier pen, any Machier. Um, the Pelican actually is coming out with a new one for in January, I believe, um, that is an M1000 uh, size, and it's full Machier. Now, it's over 4,000 US dollars, <laughs> so I mean, chances are, mm, ain't gonna happen. Uh, but again, a girl can dream. It looks beautiful, but I just want to have a Machier pen. Well, I don't think it would ever be the dominant thing in my collection, I think having uh, a pen that is truly a work of art. I mean, I have pens that are absolutely stunning. Um, and I mean, I I've, I've do own a Arushi pen uh, and I adore the feel. And so like the artwork that goes into these is next level. I have a lot of pens that really does take a lot of time and investment into the material itself, but while they these are artworks there's just there's just something about Machier that's completely different um you know it's like having a, a van gogh on the on your wall it's just like the de the time and the detail and the the talent that go into those is just next level so i would love if i could get my hands on a true piece of artwork like that uh, I do have to say I would have probably a hard time inking it up and using it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think 
if I were to invest in something like that, um, I would treat it like a piece of art, just like I do f stuff that I actually put on my walls. So <laughs> um, I would love to get a Machier. And then the final pen, uh, I kind of flip flopped quite a bit uh, between either Sailor King a pen or the Pelican M1000. And I flip flop between these two because I just, I can't decide for one, but two, I tried to think which one would I actually use more in my day-to-day -day life? Which pen do I actually use more now? Because I have a pro gear um, and mm, got real close there um, and an M805, um, which is both like, I guess the one step down from either the M1000 or the, the King of Pens. So which one would I use more often? And to be fair, I actually use the Pro Gear more than I do the Pelican 805. Uh, but that's because the Pelican writes a little bit broader than I am not comfortable writing with, but that I, I tend to write right now. So when I have the 805 inked up, I have to have it in a journal that can handle uh, a ton of ink coming down and has a very large line width um, to be able to handle that. Even though it's a fine nib, it writes almost like a broad um, and broad is just not my jam. So then I was like, okay, but I use I used the, the, the Sailor more often than the Pelican, so I should go with King of Pens. But I decided no, I'm actually gonna go on my list official with the Pelican M1000 or 1005, whatever, just that model. Um, because if I get it with the extra fine nib, then I would definitely use it more often. Um, and I just think it's really gorgeous. The only thing about the Pelican that is slightly holding me back is that I feel like I'm running out of time to pick one into my collection because they're transitioning all of the their pens to being not transparent. So right now, like if you, my goodness, were to hold it up to the light, you can see through the barrels, you can see through the striation in the material and see your ink level. Uh, and they're transitioning away from that, which I think is a gigantic mistake. Uh, I've yet to meet anyone who thinks it's a good idea, but I'm assuming, and this is nothing official, so take this with a grain of salt, I am assuming it will be easier to mass produce them without having to make sure that those striations are see-through, um, without having to polish the inside of the barrel. It's probably significantly cheaper for them to make, um, having it completely opaque. Didn't mean to rhyme on that one, but that is just my assumption. I, in no way, shape, or form is this the actual truth. I don't know. That is just my pure assumption. But something I always appreciated from Pelican was that you could see through the barrel. So I will likely have to pick one up secondhand. Um, so if you know of anyone selling uh, on, on the cheap, <laughs> uh, that is definitely something that I'm after. So those are my five this year from Reverse, Pelican M1000, any Machie pen, uh, Pilot Custom Arushi, Bennu Euphoria, Cookies and Cream, and then the Platinum 3776 Celluloid in Tortoise. Those are my top five. I really hope I can collect uh, or acquire at some point in 2023. Let me know in the comment section down below what pens you're after for 2023. Doesn't have to be five. I just do five because that seems to be best for the algorithm. Plus it's, that way I don't have to choose. It's like Sophie's choice these days. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't have to be five. You can pick one, two, ten. I don't care. Just tell me pens you're hoping to pick up in the year 2023. Uh, while you're down there, you might as well hit the like button and the subscribe button uh, and check out the description for the link to my Patreon account if you would like to help support me and what I do on this channel. Uh, but if you're still watching almost 15 minutes in, you are the reason I make these videos. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. Just kidding. That's the beginning. <laughs> it is time for our Patreon crew shout out. Uh, this was filmed as of December 1st. So if you don't see your name, don't fret. I will update it as soon as I possibly can. My two ultimate humans, Daniel Rodney and Comp Dave, and all my VIPs, Susan, 
McCall Bennett Lawrence, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Subi Wan Kenobi, Catherine Molina, Waylay Chang, Brian Law, Bill Pemberton, Lucas Bell, Robert Myers, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Stephen Baldwin, Digital Tent Tech, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Joan Worthman, Luna Wolf Games, Aaron C., and Glenn Kelly. You guys make it super, super, super possible for me to keep making these videos. No matter what tier you're in, I thank you for supporting me on Patreon, especially those of you who've been with me since the beginning. You mean more to me than you could possibly ever know. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!